we shall discuss yet another powerful theorem for network reduction which is known as the thevenin's theorem thevenin's theorem provides an easy and quick method to solve any complicated electrical networks if we have a circuit as shown in figure a having a voltage source e with an internal resistance r with a network of resistors r1 and r2 and a load resistor rl connected at points a and b then according to this theorem this circuit can be reduced into a simple one having a voltage source vth a series resistor rth and the load resistor rl once we have vth and rth we can find out the total current i that is flowing through the resistor so thevenin theorem provides a mathematical technique for replacing a given network as viewed from two output terminals by a single voltage source with a series resistance we can have the statement of thevenin theorem in a bit more formal way it goes like this any network of resistors and voltage sources and current sources as well when viewed from points a and b in the network can be replaced by a single voltage source vth and a single resistance rth in series with the voltage source and after the replacement of the network by a single voltage source with a series resistance it is easy to find the current ith that is the thevenin's current in any load resistance rl joined across terminals a and b let us understand how to solve an electrical network using the thevenin's theorem suppose that it is required to find the current flowing through the load resistor rl as shown in this figure so the resistor that is connected between nodes a and b is a load resistor the first step in solving an electrical network using thevenin's theorem is to remove the load resistor rl from the circuit now you can see that the output terminal ab is open circuited in the next step we will calculate the open circuited voltage voc which appears across terminals a and b when they are open that is when rl is removed as a and b are same as the nodes c and d voc or the open circuit voltage is same as the voltage drop across resistor r2 so voc the open circuit voltage is the voltage drop across r2 which is nothing but i to r2 where we assume i as the circuit current when a and b are open and this current i is given by the total voltage in the circuit e divided by the total resistance in the circuit which includes the internal resistance of the circuit plus r1 plus r2 therefore the open circuit voltage voc which we again call as vth that is the thevenin's voltage this is equal to the current in the circuit multiplied by the resistance r2 therefore this is equal to e times r2 divided by r plus r1 plus r2 this is the first step in reducing a circuit using the thevenin's theorem so what essentially we have done is that we have found out the voltage source in the simplified circuit now we have to find out the value of the series resistance rth that is connected in the circuit this is a second step and let's see how to calculate rth to calculate rth we will remove any battery in the circuit and then replace that with the internal resistance of the voltage source if the internal resistance of the circuit is zero then we will simply put a short if we have a current source in the circuit then we will replace that by an infinite resistance that is we will leave that terminal open circuited in the example that we are considering we only had a voltage source e having an internal resistance r so we will remove that battery and then simply place the internal resistance r in the circuit and now the circuit reduces to one having three resistors r r1 and then r2 we will now look inward from terminals a and b 
as shown in this figure and then calculate Ri, which is the effective resistance of the circuit. The effective resistance or the equivalent resistance of the network as viewed from the output terminals A and B is given by R. And in this case, we can see that R1 and R are in series. Therefore, that is R1 plus R and that is in a parallel combination with resistor R2. When we calculate this, this would be R2 multiplied by R1 plus R divided by R2 plus R1 plus R. And this is known as the Thevenin's resistance. Once we have VTH and RTH, we can connect RTH in series with VTH. So this forms the simplified version of the circuit that we were working on. Now we can connect the load resistor back into the circuit as in the second figure. In this case, a current I flows through the circuit and that current is given by I, which is again denoted as ITH, which is the Thevenin's current. This is equal to VTH divided by RTH plus RL, because RTH is in series with the load resistor RL. So this is how we will reduce any electrical network using the Thevenin's theorem. What we have been discussing so far can be summarized into a statement as shown here. If you have a complicated electrical network consisting of a number of voltage or current sources and a network of resistors and a load resistor RL connected at the output terminal, then this electrical network can be reduced into one having a single voltage source in series with a single resistance RTH which is the equivalent resistance of all the resistors in the circuit. We will get a better understanding of the theorem when we do this problem. In the circuit given, we have a 20 volt voltage source and then 4 resistors 4 ohm, 8 ohm, 4 ohm and then 10 ohm and then we have the load resistor RL equal to 5 ohm connected between terminals A and B. We have to reduce this network using the Thevenin theorem and then calculate the current IL that is going to flow through the load resistor RL. The first step is to remove RL from the circuit terminals A and B and to make it open circuited. Then we will calculate the open circuit voltage across terminals A and B. So as shown in this figure, we have removed the load resistor RL and then we have to find out the voltage drop across terminals A and B. Terminals A and B occur across the 10 ohm resistor and VOC is nothing but the voltage drop across the 10 ohm resistor. We now have to solve for the total resistance in the circuit as viewed from the source end, that is as viewed from this side. The total resistance as viewed from the source end consists of this 4 ohm resistor which is in a series combination of the parallel combination of 8 and 10 ohm with the 4 ohm resistor. So these two resistors 8 ohm and then 10 ohm are in series therefore the total resistance is 18 ohm and this 18 ohm is in parallel combination with the 4 ohm and the parallel combination of 4 ohm and 18 ohm is in a series combination with 4 ohm. In short form we can write like this the 4 ohm resistor is in a series combination with the parallel combination of 4 ohm and 18 ohm. Incidentally, if we have two resistors which are connected in series, so this is R1 and this is R2, the effective resistance would be R equal to R1 plus R2. Now, if we have a parallel combination of resistors R1 and R2, the effective resistance would be 1 by R equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 which is equal to R1 
plus R2 divided by R1 R2. Therefore, R is equal to R1 R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Now, the total resistance R as viewed from the source end is given by R equal to 4 plus 4 multiplied by 18 divided by 4 plus 18 and this is equal to 4 plus 72 divided by 22 and that is equal to 160 divided by 22. So, this is the resistance that we see while we look inward from the source end. That is, we can simplify the circuit like this. We have the voltage source 20 volt which is in series with R having a value 160 divided by 22. And with this simplified circuit, we can find out the total current that is going to flow in the circuit. And the total current is given by I. And I is nothing but V divided by R. V is 20 volt and then R we have calculated to be 160 divided by 22. So, this is equal to 11 divided by 4 or this is equal to 2.75 amperes. So, this is the total current that is flowing through the circuit. And this is a circuit that we were considering with the load resistor RL removed and the total current we have calculated in the circuit to be I which is equal to 2.75 amperes. We can now calculate the current through the 10 ohm resistor by using the current divider rule. That is current through the 10 ohm resistor which is I dash is given by total current. The total current in the circuit is I multiplied by resistance in the other branch that is 4 ohm 4 divided by total resistance in the network. So, this is the network that we are going to consider. So, total resistance in the network is 4 plus 8 plus 10 which is equal to 2.75 multiplied by 4 divided by 22 which is equal to 0 0.5 amperes. So, we have found out the current that is going to flow through the 10 ohm resistor. Now, we can calculate the open circuit voltage that is VOC. VOC which is again equal to VTH the Thevenin voltage is given by the current that is flowing through 10 ohm resistor is I dash. So, this is I dash multiplied by 10 ohms which is equal to 0 0.5 multiplied by 10 that is equal to 5 volt. So, we have completed the first step in reducing the electrical network. According to Thevenin's theorem, we can reduce the given circuit into one having a voltage source VTH and a series resistor RTH. This is the open circuited end or the end where we connect the load resistor. And we have calculated the Thevenin voltage VTH. Now we have to find out the Thevenin resistance RTH. To calculate RTH, we have to keep in mind two things. If we have a voltage source in the circuit, then that has to be replaced by its internal resistance. If the internal resistance is zero, then we can simply connect a short in place of the voltage source. If we have a current source in the circuit, then it has to be replaced by an infinite resistance. That is, we can simply replace that current source and then leave that terminal open circuited. An open circuited terminal is equivalent to introducing an infinite resistance. In the original circuit that is given, we have a 20 volt supply which is having Therefore, we will simply connect a short in place of the 20 volt power supply. Now, RTH has to be calculated looking into the circuit from terminals A and B. As we look into the terminal, we can see that the 4 ohm 
and four ohm resistors are in parallel connection and this parallel connection is in a series connection with the 8 ohm resistor and this combination that is the combination of 4 4 and 8 is in a parallel combination with the 10 ohm resistor we can write it like this rth this is equal to the parallel combination of 4 and 4 which is in a series combination with the 8 ohm resistor and this entire resistance network is in a parallel combination with a 10 ohm resistor. We will solve the inside brackets first. So inside that bracket we have a 4 and 4 in parallel and their equivalent resistance is given by 4 multiplied by 4 divided by 4 plus 4 which is in a series combination with 8 and all these are in a parallel combination with the 10 ohm resistor. So this is equal to 16 divided by 8 plus 8 which is in a parallel combination with the 10 ohm resistor and this is equal to 80 divided by 8 which is in a parallel combination with the 10 ohm resistor and that is equal to 10 which is in a parallel combination with the 10 ohm resistor and therefore this can be written as 10 multiplied by 10 divided by 10 plus 10 and that is equal to 100 divided by 20 which is 5 ohms. So we have completed the second task of solving an electrical network using Thevenin theorem. The first task was to find out VTH that is the Thevenin voltage and then as the second task we have found out the Thevenin resistance RTH. Now we will connect VTH in series with RTH that is we have combined all the voltage sources and current sources if there are any into a single source having value VTH. And all the resistors in the network have been combined to this single value RTH. Now we can connect VTH in series with RTH and these are terminals A and B. We will now reconnect the load resistor RL. The current that is going to flow through the load resistor is a current that is produced by this voltage source and that we will designate as ITH. So we have the load current IL which is nothing but ITH is equal to the value of the load resistor is 5 ohm. We have found out VTH to be 5 volt and RTH to be 5 ohms. Therefore ITH is 5 volt divided by the total resistance in the circuit which is 5 plus 5 ohms and that is equal to 5 divided by 10 and this is 0 0.5 ampere. So the current that is going to flow through the load resistor RL is 0.5 amperes. We shall now do this problem. Using Thevenin theorem calculate the current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor. In the figure the 4 ohm resistor appears across terminals A and B. As you inspect this figure you can see that there is a 12 volt voltage source and a 10 ampere current source included in this circuit. RL the load resistor is the 4 ohm resistor that is connected between A and B and the other resistors that are included in the network include the 3 ohm, 6 ohm and 2 ohm resistors. You can also see that the circuit is grounded at point C. And we have to find out the current that is flowing through the 4 ohm resistor. When we use Thevenin theorem, the current that is going to flow through the load resistor is ITH. We have to find out ITH. The first step in solving any electrical network using the Thevenin theorem is to remove the load resistor 
from the output terminals. When we remove the load resistor 4 ohm from the circuit terminals A and B, that will become open circuited. So this figure shows the open circuited network. Now the voltage that is going to appear across terminals A and B is the Thevenin voltage VTH. We have to find out the Thevenin voltage VTH first. As we remove the load resistor, we see that there are two loops in the circuit that need to be solved. Let us consider the second loop first, which consists of the 10 ampere current source and the 2 ohm resistor. In this case, we can see that the full 10 ampere current flows through the 2 ohm resistor because right here we have a ground connected. Therefore, the drop across the 2 ohm resistor, which we denote as VB, this is equal to the current flowing through the resistor multiplied by the value of the resistance which is 2 and that is equal to 20 volt. Vb equal to 20 volt is with respect to the common ground. That is in measuring Vb, we will be connecting a voltmeter across the ground. So we are measuring Vb with respect to the common ground. Now let us consider the first loop. In the first loop, we have two resistors 3 ohm and 6 ohm which are connected across a 12 volt battery and then the voltage drop across the 6 ohm resistor can be calculated using the voltage divider rule. It is similar to the current divider rule but there is a difference. Voltage drop across a 6 ohm resistor is Va equal to the total potential in the circuit. So that is 12 multiplied by the value of the resistance across which we have to find out the potential drop. So that is 6 ohms divided by total resistance in the loop. So that is 6 plus 3. When we calculate, this will be equal to 8 volts. In order to measure VA, what we will do is that we will connect a voltmeter across point A and the ground. So this will give you VA. We will pause for a while and discuss about the voltage divider rule. Let us assume that we have a voltage source V which is providing a current I in the circuit. And this current I produces a voltage drop V1 across resistor R1 and that produces a voltage drop V2 across resistor R2. Then according to the voltage divider rule, V1 will be equal to the total voltage in the circuit that is V multiplied by value of the resistance across which we want to find out the voltage drop. So in this case, this is R1 divided by the total resistance in the circuit that is R1 plus R. Similarly, the voltage drop across resistor R2, this is equal to V multiplied by value of the resistance across which we need to find out the voltage drop. So that is R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So this is the voltage divider rule in short. Let us come back to the circuit. We have found that the voltage drop across the 2 ohm resistor as measured by a voltmeter is Vb and we have found that as equal to 20 volt. And the voltage drop across the 6 ohm resistor as measured by a voltmeter is Va and that is equal to 8 volt. That is Va equal to 8 volt and then Vb equal to 20 volt which are with respect to the common ground. Now the Thevenin voltage Vth is nothing but the voltage that is measured across these two terminals by using a voltmeter and that is equal to Vba. And this is given by Vb minus Va 
that is 20 minus 8 which is equal to 12 volt as we have assumed this point is A and this point is B and we see that point B is at a higher potential because VB minus VA is a positive quantity that is we have completed the first step in the task that is to find out VTH now we have to find out RTH the resistance that need to be connected in series with the Thevenin source Thevenin resistance RTH is the resistance of the network as viewed back into the open circuited network from terminals A and B. In calculating RTH, we will replace all voltage sources by their internal resistances and current sources by infinite resistance. Infinite resistance is equivalent to opening a circuit. We see that the 12 volt power supply in the original circuit does not have any internal resistance. Therefore, we will place a short where the 12 volt supply is placed and then at the position where we have the 10 ampere current source we will place a open circuit so the circuit goes like this and RTH the Thevenin resistance is the resistance as we see when we look from terminals A and B into the circuit so we have figure C which now can be simplified into figure D in this case, we have neglected the open circuit because no current is going to flow through the open circuit. And we have to calculate the Thevenin resistance RTH looking into the terminals from A and B. Looking into the terminals A and B, we see that the 3 ohm and the 6 ohm resistors are in parallel and their parallel combination is in series with the 2 ohm resistor. Therefore, the Thevenin resistance is given by RTH equal to 6 and 3 ohm resistors are in parallel and this parallel combination is in series with the 2 ohm resistor. So, this is equal to 6 multiplied by 3 divided by 6 plus 3 plus 2 that is equal to 18 divided by 9 plus 2 that is equal to 36 divided by 9 which is equal to 4 ohms thus we have obtained VTH and RTH so VTH is 12 volt and then RTH is 4 ohms now we will reconnect the load resistor 4 ohms and the current through the load resistor ITH this is equal to IL is given by 12 divided by the total resistance that is 4 plus 4 which is equal to 1.5 amperes. So this is how we solve any complex electrical network using the Thevenin's theorem.